I'm very happy to be interviewing Daniel Dunn, a.k.a. Daniel of Doria, as he's known on his YouTube channel. He's recently authored two fantastic books of spiritual wisdom presented as an extensive volume of quotes. Book one is Raising Eden, Wisdom of the Eternal, and book two is Raising Eden, Volume Two, Wisdom of the Singular Truth. I hope you enjoy our discussion as much as I did. Hi, Daniel. Thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed today by me for my YouTube channel. Very pleased. And um, we can put this interview up on your YouTube channel as well, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we'll do as well. You know, um, I've been looking forward to speaking to you for like 10 years, you know, since 2008 when we first um, got to know each other and stuff. That's right. Yeah, it was it was 2008, and we both got online around the same time. And I think you were you were one of the first people I connected with online. I think that was in the sort of spiritual alternative thinking movement, and we shared a few emails and chats, and and we've kind of been in contact on and off ever since then, really, haven't we? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been you know amazing, really. You know, after you know all them years. And, you know, even sometimes, not speaking to each other for, like, months at a time sometimes, the, uh, you know, we end up doing the exact same things at the same time, you know? Uh, yeah, exactly. And we've both just released books pretty much at identical times as well. Although you've beat me to the to the finishing post with book two. I, mm. I'm still writing book two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you was ahead of me, though, for uh, book one, because, like, uh, I think I finished mine a few weeks after yours, but I didn't know anything about yours, so, you know, it was even funnier to me. Yeah. No, I didn't know you'd ri written a book either, so, um, synchronicity. So, um, but obviously I don't know anything about you and how you kind of got started, so what I'd like to ask you is, um, when you first made your YouTube channel, which I think was around the same time as me, 2008, what was your reason for making the YouTube channel? Did you have it all planned out, what you wanted to do? Had you been, um, had you been thinking this way for a long time, you know, since childhood? Or did this kind of all just happen? How did it get started? Well, actually, um, yeah, I did actually have it all planned out, you know, um, from when I started the first channel. Um, you know, I got to about 5,000 subscribers, and, uh, it, you know, it's from, like, 2006 where I really got onto YouTube. And then um, I spent just two years just soaking up, you know, everything I could upon every subject, because you know how it is, you know, one video leads to another one, and you're just yeah. soaking everything up like a sponge. So, you know, I did that for a few years, and then <clears throat> after that, I just basically thought, you know, I have enough knowledge now to basically be able to do my own, uh, you know, stuff. So that's when I decided to do the channel. And then after I did the channel, I decided that I wanted to really, you know, just cut out all of the BS on all of the other people's channels and stuff and just really just focus on, you know, the wisdom and, you know, self-empowerment. You know, like uh, the really empower fit, you know, empowering practical information, you know, people can use to, you know, become a lot more powerful and stronger, you know, in themselves, you know, and certain. And um, <clears throat> basically, you know, from a young age, uh, I've always, you know, been spiritual anyway, you know, from a very young age. And I've just always, um, <clears throat> as I've gone along, just like grown and um, I've always been led to the next part of the journey by actually taking the journey because you know that's how it works you've got to you've got to jump in before you actually get the rewards and you know get to where you're supposed to be going you know you can't just like come up with you know a full plan i know i had like a, a little bit of a plan but it was like more of like a, a context of what i wanted to do and all the details are filled in as you go ahead you know through time and stuff you know they're all revealed to you and um, you know that, that's kind of how i write as well you know when i'm writing i do it from a higher place you know in myself and, you know, basically I, I put in as less mind as possible, you know, into everything I do and as much heart and soul into everything, you know. So, you know, that's kind of how I do things. But, yeah, I've kind of always been this way, though, to be honest with you. I've just refined it more, you know, as I've gone along, you know, through the months and years and stuff. So, yeah. Well, wow. Well, you're reading my mind here because you've just answered the two questions, the next two questions I was going to ask you, which is, were you like this as a child? Uh, you know, have you always been different, alternative thinking, spiritual thinking? Um, and the other question was about your writing. Um, you know, 
Oh, this this book, your first book, Raising Eden, I have a copy right here in front of me. Raising Eden, Wisdom of the Eternal, is a, a beautiful book of quotes, so many quotes here. And I was going to ask you, when it comes to writing the quotes, um, you know, where does this come from? Is it divinely inspired or does it come from meditation or are you communicating with an entity? Or But you've answered that question. Um, so that's that's fantastic. Um when you when you wrote this, this book, um, presenting it as a book of quotes, did you realize when you wrote this that this is a perfect book? To, the way that it's presented is a perfect book to use as bibliomancy, you know, utilizing synchronicity in the same way that you would use a, an oracle deck um, or even a tarot deck. Um, you can just sort of flip through the book and ask a question in your mind, if you like, or or focus on an intention or or simply just be open to receive whatever information you need to receive. And instead of pulling a, a card from an Oracle deck, you flip through the book and open at the page that's right for you. Did you realize your book would be so perfect for that? Well, actually, like, um, you, you know, I use it and, uh, you know, I flip through the actual thing myself sometimes. And um, <clears throat> I remember actually reading the entire book after I'd uh, after it had been published for the first time. Like I was outside uh, just sat in, you know, in nature in this field, you know, because I live in the countryside in a cottage at the moment. And I'm just surrounded by, you know, nature and stuff. And that's where I've actually wrote these two books. But it's um, I have thought that. You know, in the future, I may, you know, start releasing them onto tarot cards and stuff, all of the quotes and everything in sets and things. And also just even like a, an app on a mobile phone or something, you know, so people can use, you know, like daily inspiration, you know, as they do the day and stuff to inspire them and just motivate them. But, yeah, I mean, it has like multiple uses because everything I create is um, I always base it on, like Bruce Lee said, you know, be water. So it's, you know, <clears throat> all my work's very fluid in its structure, so it can adapt and, you know, can mould into many different forms and be used for many different things, you know. Yeah, wow, uh, absolutely. I mean, you can use this book in in the way that I said um, for Bibliomancy or read it right through for, you know, inspiration, um, as you say. But that would be a really good idea the oracle cards tarot cards or an app so that you could use that for the for the same thing and that's how i've been reading it i've been you know flicking through and, and using it for bibliomancy uh and uh, you know working with synchronicity for it so looking at your youtube channel when you first started your youtube channel and and the quotes obviously started coming in pretty much you know, not too long after you started your channel, you started to bring these quotes in that were coming in from you that were in alignment with the videos you were releasing. Did you intend for that to be a book then or did that just just happen as you started to bring so many quotes through? Well, I was like um, I was the same as uh, you because you always uh, wanted to do a book, didn't you, from when you was a lot younger and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you finally managed to do it. I, I wanted to do a book from like 2008 because I started to realize that I had all this, you know, profound, um, you know, knowledge and, um, you know, a lot of the stuff uh, because I'd been like, you know, looking into the fringe in so many different areas. It was all coming together into one place. And I knew that, you know, there wasn't anyone out there that had all of them exact pieces that, you know, could put it together like that, you know, because things were a lot different then as well, because, you know, um, <clears throat> there wasn't that many spiritual channels back in them days. And there was only like one main Illuminati channel. Yeah. You know, uh, back in them days. And there was like there was only two um, channels, for, you know, for instance, that did the ancient history. You know, I mean, there was only my channel and a Russian guy called Igor Frankenstein, like in Russia, who was, you know, covering the ancient history and stuff. And I really wanted to seed that into the consciousness, you know, which I've you know, successfully managed to do, like because the ancient history now is just everybody's doing it and it's exploded everywhere, you know, and. You know, I'm very happy because, I, you know, I got to help other people explode their work over the years as well, like, um, you know, Brian Forster and stuff. I've, you know, been helping his channel since it was, uh, like, 2,000 subscribers, you know. I've uploaded, like, every single one of his videos, you know, and just been really promoting, you know, basically, not just him, but, you know, I've been promoting everybody that has powerful knowledge that can really, you know, help the human condition on the planet, you know, and help the world as well and heal it and heal people's thinking. 
So, you know, it's been a long process, but, you know, it's uh, it's still ongoing and always evolving because, you know, that's what work does. It just evolves and, you know, my work is just constantly evolving like everybody else's. So most of the time I'm not actually planning what I'm actually going to do next. You know, I just sometimes I create opportunities for myself, you know, because that's what, um, you know, uh, you know, wise people do. But, um, you know, a lot of the time I'm just following uh, the opportunities as, uh, you know, as they present themselves as well. So... Yeah, uh, exactly the same, really. That's kind of how it goes with me as well. And I agree, it's really exploded and it's fantastic. But there are so many people now that are wanting to learn the truth. And the minute that they do learn this truth, they start to release this truth and deliver it to others. And, you know, the Internet on that level has been just such a fantastic, fantastic resource um, for information spreading. And, and now more than ever, that's just so, so intense now because people are just waking up, you know, minute by minute, um, obviously looking at this world and seeing the state it's in. When you view the world from a sort of linear third dimensional level, it makes you want to go out there and start finding out what's really happening. People are watching the news and they're realizing that that they're not getting the truth. And so, you know, they're finding people like you. So that is fantastic. And when you said about me uh, wanting to write a book from a child, uh, certainly I did. When I got to about my mid, my late teens, early 20s, I was re reading kind of romance novels, Mills and Boone, that sort of thing. So I presumed this book that I would write would be a romance book. And I even tried to write one and it was appalling because I simply couldn't write at all. <laughs> I had <laughs> no idea that it would be sort of... 30 years later that I would write write something that's completely nothing to do whatsoever with romance, <laughs> ap apart from the, you know, the twin flame energy kind of thing. But looking at your YouTube channel, I mean, it's fantastic. It, it's kind of like an online university for, for me, really, I feel, because there are so many different subjects there contained within one place. So if somebody is wanting to learn and soak up knowledge quickly and fast track through what's been happening on a, you know, as you say, the ancient history level, the Illuminati, the spiritual way of, of, of uh, dealing with the situation and all the, the self work that you need to do. It's all there. It's all there in one place. And you have a real diversity of subjects. Is there any particular subject that's your passion that you feel driven to um, look into? Or are you just as um, invested in in all of these subjects, seeing seeing those subjects as one? Well, I mean, the most important subject to me is just, you know, um, healing people's thinking and healing the earth. That's basically what I'm doing, and, you know, building um, spiritual communities all over the world, you know. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I mean, <clears throat> like... The, you know, there is like 10,000 videos I've created, you know, since 2008. And some of them, you know, were like, um, I poured like 26 hours into just one of them, you know, uh, on some of the uh, series and things. And the first series I did, uh, Raising Eden, it was actually called. That was my first series on um, YouTube. And it's, uh, it, you know, it's 52 parts long, you know, and it's been seen by like millions of people when it first came out onto YouTube. And it was, uh, it's been translated into five different languages, like Spanish and German and, you know, and Portuguese. And um, <clears throat> that's one of, the uh, one of the reasons why I actually released Raids Need in the book, like now and stuff, because people were always asking me since 2011, because, you know, Raids Need and the actual series on YouTube took me three years to make it all in all, wow. you know, every week. And, um, you know, there's loads of people into that, but people, you know, they wanted more all this time, you know, it kept coming back, you know, I want some more Raising Eden, Raising Eden, it, you know, it didn't matter how many other series I, I created after that, which I have been creating series uh, up until the end of last year continuously, you know, like uh, Transcendence and Singularity and um, Shadow Government and, you know, Ascendant and, um, you know, there's so many different series that I've worked on up to this point. That people basically it just like expands outwards in a spiral, you know, with more detail and more information. But if people really want to um, get like the whole thing all in one go, I compressed it all into the first book. You know, that was the purpose of the first book really to compress the last ten years of all of that high wisdom <clears throat> about all of the different subjects. You know, from UFOs to Atlantis 
you know, to, um, you know, self-empowerment and information that people can use practically and stuff, you know, so there's everything in, in Raising Eden, the book, the first one, from, you know, it covers love and creation, infinity, you know, the beast system of Babylon, UFOs, Atlantis, ancient history, you know, there's so much in this book that, um, you know, people can just use it and, <clears throat> you know, it's just going to be a great benefit to anybody who reads it, you know. There's not like a soul on earth who won't gain a lot of strength from, you know, just receiving, you know, what's in it. Yeah. So. I remember when Raising Eden first came out. I remember, you know, when that first came out. And I remember your Raising Eden series on YouTube. So looking at the book, and it is a really you know, big, heavy book here, just full of all these quotes. And as you say, you can read it through in a linear sense or you can dip in and out. So when you're writing the quotes through, was every quote from Raising Eden taken from the Raising Eden series or did you um, write some extra ones for the book? Yeah, I um, a lot of the things in there is not just from the Raising Eden series, it's from all of my series. You know, I right. actually went through all of my entire work before I started on this, you know, to also refresh my memory, you know, to where, you know, my own spirituality and, you know, all that energy and, you know, all the gifts that I'd received over the years and stuff. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I just, I wrote most of it from... Obviously, I had to change some of the wording slightly on a few different things, but most of it is like timeless wisdom. So I've, you know, wrote it as it actually was received, you know, in that way, because it could be used like 10 years ago. It can be used like thousands of years from now, and you wouldn't have to change the wording very much, really, on any of them. You know, it, c it can be used anywhere at any time, you know, and that's the beauty of it, because it's a universal wisdom. You know, it's not just an earthly wisdom, you know, that's man-made or anything. It's, you know, it's timeless and universal. You know, it can be used in any place in, you know, time, space or within any dimension you want. Yeah, it's so. coming through from that zero point. So there isn't anything. It's not going to go, uh, you know, go out of date. It's that zero point energy. So when you... Um, when you brought the quotes through, you, you have sort of p partly answered this question, but do you go into a sort of a, um, an altered state? Do you go into a trance? Do you meditate? Or does it just come to you? How, how does it feel? I mean, I'm wondering if it's kind of similar to how I pick up information from the nine. You know, is this uh, channeled, if you like? I know that word channeled doesn't always resonate with everyone, but looking at the book and looking at the energy here it seems like it's that same inspired kind of place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, all my quotes, you know, that, you know, like I says, you know, I have this really nice giant blown up poster from one of the quotes, you know, that I uh, designed for the book and stuff, you know, in my room. And it's always a reminder for me of where the actual wisdom comes from. And, you know, the quote that's actually there is, you know, as soon as you take the I out of the equation, the small you, it allows the greater you to emerge, basically. So, and if you look at my YouTube avatar, um, it's like a man standing in front of uh, the inner, you know, soul. And, you know, the sun, you know, that actually represents the true me, whereas the smaller me, you know, the human, you know, little me or whatever, that's like the guy in front of the sun. Whereas yeah. in the world, you, you, you know, a lot of people probably see themselves as the person and not the actual soul in the background. Whereas for me, it's kind of, you know, reversed because the real me is actually, you know, the formless, you know, soul, that, that higher self, you know, that soul point, the zero point, you know, like yeah. everybody's a spiritual being having a human experience. They're not a human being having a spiritual experience. And as soon as you invert things like that to the true thing, it allow you know as soon as you establish a a relationship with your higher self basically because that's what you're doing you know you can establish a relationship with your higher self and uh, you know I've established one with myself every single day I always take time out for myself every single day to you know establish that connection with my higher self so I'm not channeling other entities or other beings you know like the uh, you know the collective nine and stuff I'm actually um, <clears throat> you know into my higher self and you, you know just streaming. Uh, the energy from, you know, the core that is me into, you know, my human self. And that's where the uh, the wisdom and all of the quotes come from. And <clears throat> me being me, you know, I don't just, like, sit down and write. You know, it's only specific, um, you know, times and uh, places that it just spawns spontaneously. And it could be anywhere. 
I mean, um, like, a lot of the book was actually, apart from the ones I actually took out of all my work from YouTube, I actually wrote all of it, um, you know, from time to time over the many weeks and months because, you know, I, I always have my phone with me and uh, every time some wisdom comes through, I always scramble to write it down fast before I forget it, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so if anything useful comes through, I always just write it down. And then after a while, after many days and weeks and months have passed by, you've got like, uh, you know, hundreds of pages of, you know, wisdom that people can really use, you know. Yeah. And that's all come from, you know, the higher self, you know, that zero point, you know, yeah. the true you, you, you know, the singular truth within, basically. Yeah, that greater aspect of you that is part of the all that you can't really give a name to. And it's the same with me. I've got my phone with me all the time and something will just come through. You know, I, I call it the nine, and uh, but it's kind of the same thing, really. And, you know, they, if you like, will speak to me or say something or I'll think something and have this inner conversation with them. And then I think, well, I better write this down because I could actually, you know, draw forward more information from this, channeling, transmission. It's It's kind of all the same thing, really. And I would also say that the nine are that higher self, that zero point. So I email myself just like you do. Um, so I can see that, you know, I can see that in your book. It's it's clear that the essence of where this has come from is you as a human person. But it's the greater aspect of you, exactly as you were saying. And the, and the photograph that you talk about, you know, that's the photo I will put up on on, you know, as the body of this this um, edit. So when people are listening to our interview, that's what they will see. They'll see you standing in that beautiful sun. <laughs> so but looking at the book, there is I mean, looking through there's loads and loads of, of quotes that I love and, and resonate with. And some of them are very, I would say they inspire me uh, because they are just resonating with what I know. And so when I read them, it's like, yes, that's that's my own voice here. You know, my own voice would say that others are more, I would say, educational. And um, you need to sort of get your head around, OK, this bit, this bit. And then you it sort of inspires you to think deeply and to analyze so there's information here as well as inspiration it's difficult for me to pick out which is my favorite but one i do really like is you are living in an electromagnetic fractal infinity holographic energy matrix of the one that's early on in the in the book in book one i love that can you talk about that quote for me yeah well i mean uh, basically you know, we're living in an electromagnetic universe, you know, and, um, <clears throat> you know, obviously everything is one, you know, it's like uh, one of the quotes in, um, you know, one of the, the, you know, the Bible passages or whatever goes into, you know, you will find me under every stone, you know, under every rock, you know, that quote. And it's, it's basically just, um, <clears throat> basically, it's just a reminder that, you know, God is infinite, basically, and in an infinite creator, there's only, a, you know, there's only unity basically and um, you know the universe in which we inhabit which is a living conscious entity in of itself you know because um, you know if you can macrocosmically zoom out this entire universe is just like um, a nerve um, you know inside uh, you know a brain or something yeah <laughs> but anyway it's um, it's just a reminder basically that you know um, we're within a you know electromagnetic uh, universe and you know everything's infinite in of itself and we get to basically <clears throat> we're the imagination of ourselves you know yeah and that holographic energy matrix of the one is this as you as you were explaining it as you you can sort of macrocosmically zoom out um like fractals you know fractal infinity as you've put in the quote and and that's kind of how i see it as well did anything ever come through any quotes that you didn't understand did you write them down and think what does this mean and did you have to spend time to process what you'd already written or did you understand everything straight away I kind of um, understood everything right away, but I also, some of the, uh, well, you know, quite a few of the quotes where I was like, I was thinking, you know, this is just, you know, profound stuff. You mm -hmm. know, there was like nothing like this in the world that, you know, that explains it so simply like that. And it's like, you know, I really, you know, 
I'm in awe. And, uh, you know, certainly, like, when I did some of my videos, you know, when I was originally creating Raiden Eden, especially, you know, like, uh, midway, you know, like, some points towards the start, I was in awe at different things, you know, especially when it came to, like, the fractal infinity stuff, and that we're all within a, you know, a living holograph of light, basically, because this is all a projection yeah. that only feels dense because of the repulsion effect of the magnetic field of all of the other energy that's, you know, interacting with us. You know, and um, I just felt like, um, you know, I was in awe, you know, at different points, uh, you know, and towards the end, uh, well, towards the middle as well, actually, with the ancient history stuff, I was in awe at some of the quotes and some of the information, you know, because it was such, like, mind boggling. And um, towards the end of it as well, the Raising Eden original YouTube series, um, you know, I was in awe at some of the uh, wisdom there as well. And I remember as well, that, you know, I just carried on, you know, pushing through it, and, um, yeah, I've just, uh, like, some of my friends who actually cried, you know, at some of my videos in the past, which, um, you know, but I can understand it, because as I was actually doing it, all the music and all the pictures and everything just, like, synchronising together in of itself, and sometimes, like, um, the video would actually, uh, you know, create itself, like he would create like uh, a good sound effect you know, on a certain picture that I didn't intend. Yeah. So not only was I actually creating it myself, but it was actually creating you know itself. It was actually coming to you know together without me even you know having much effort. And that's just the same as you know all of my work really. It just like it creates itself. All I do is just make sure I'm at the right place at the right time, and I'm just open as well because that's the most important thing. You just got to be open to you know, uh, be receptive, you know, that's the biggest thing, because, you know, the universe is information, and, you know, a human being in of themselves is like a receptor for information, you know, that's why we're called with hair and stuff, and that's why we're water as well, because, you know, the water allows all that information to come through without distortion, and without slowdown, you know, in space or time or anything, so, you know, that, that's why you need to be more pure, because the universe in of itself is a mirror for projections of the self, so the universe being a mirror, you know, means that you could just look out, you know, because it is a hologram. You can just, like, see everybody as a teacher and that every, everything around you has something to teach you, not just people themselves, but objects and, um, you know, in the place where you are. So, you know, people just need to be open to receiving information, basically. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. It's the same with my videos, exactly as you say as well. It seems to sort of come together and create itself. I don't do the editing. My partner edits my videos. He's also called Daniel, as you as you know, which is really yeah, interesting, is <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? And he says the same. And sometimes he won't really listen to the the information. He won't really listen to the channeling. He just puts the visuals together. And I'll say to him, "Did you mean to put this bit?" exactly on the bit where it's talking about this and oh no and then he'll look and see that the image he's used is exactly um in alignment with the information that's being spoken so um, and this kind of just happens so yeah i mean i also wanted to ask you like when, when the quotes came through did you kind of did you find that you knew them beforehand, as in your spiritual learning and your spiritual growth? Is that coming from the information that you discover when you um, go looking to create the videos, all the information that you're you're presenting on your YouTube channel? Or do you find it's the quotes that came through that is your teaching? So you are learning from your quotes you're learning just the same way someone else would who received your book they would read your book and learn from the quotes did you find that your main spiritual teaching wasn't so much coming from the research you were doing but was coming from the quotes that you were creating yourself yeah that's that's a very very good question and the answer is that it's coming from all of it all at once simultaneously but most of it was actually what happens is um, <clears throat> when you're like, um, basically there's presence, and the more present you are to yourself in each moment, you know, and the more open you are as well, you know, the more concentrated a being, the more power they have, and the more energy, you know, the more concentrated energy a being has, the more power they have, and the more influence upon all of the minds and all of the, um, you know, environment around them. So, you know, concentration and have a focal point in yourself, and if you can make the focal point, you know, the singular truth, 
that um, you, you know the true living truth inside yourself you know the soul the higher self you know zero point or whatever you want to call it you know then it um it, it just allows you to receive information and also if you cultivate an environment in yourself of learning you know you've got to always be careful about what you're actually learning and what you're actually putting into your body you know not just with food on, on your, you know on a physical level but also with your mind as well and your on your emotional level as well because you know there's like emotional physical you know mental and the spiritual all going on at the same time there's four different levels but it's like um, you know the quotes they're not just like I know there's some information in there, but the information that I placed in the book is just so that uh, people can expand their perceptions and so it seeds within their being. Basically, um, it's like a guide that they can look into themselves, you know, a hell of a lot deeper. It's like a little bullet point, really, that they can look into and find that, yeah, actually, you know, there's a lot more that I can delve into on that and stuff. But the actual, uh, a lot of the quotes, uh, especially for book two, for example, um, book two was an entirely new, fresh book, and uh, you know none of that was from the last um, you know ten years, other than the fact that I you know I've cultivated an environment of learning in myself and of wisdom. So book two basically spawned from my own learning as I was going along. Like quotes were spawning more quotes, and it was going off like basically like a tree. I, I can only describe it like a tree. Some quotes were going into more and then stopping. Some were spawning more and more. And it just kept going on like that and that, you know. And even now, it, it's slowed down a lot. But um, I'm even receiving quotes now that I just write down and stuff as well. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's just an ongoing thing. But the most important thing, though, one, is to cultivate inside yourself an environment of learning, you know, and really just dive into life you know head first and in the actual doing that's what actually creates everything else and spawns everything to you know come to you as well and then the, the second thing that's the most important thing is balance as well you know not to um overdo yourself or burn yourself out you know because yeah. that was one of the lessons when i was a lot younger when i first started youtube i was just you know uh, making videos all day you know all day and night basically you know yeah. for like weeks and weeks and um <clears throat> you know nowadays obviously i've um you know i'm a lot older and understand things a lot more now and um you know and you know i basically just perfected and refined myself over them years and you know there's no more burnouts for me you know the balance thing is you know the most important primal thing for anybody really i'd say yeah know. i would completely agree with you and I, I had that same lesson learning about burnout i did the same thing as you working all the time booking in uh, private sessions and doing um you know the channeling and the writing and then creating the videos and then all of a sudden wondering why i felt like i just wanted to give the whole thing up and just sort of soak in the bath for a week and then i realized i was in burnout <laughs> and yeah. so you have to learn to balance i i think that's really important i think what the nine would say here uh, when you're talking about you know the quotes and the way that they they're car they're coming through uh, and what they are there to do you you mentioned sort of seeds uh, for other people you know planting for them so that they can then um open up their own minds and allow your quotes to um to inspire them into their own creativity the nine would call that keys codes and triggers so we're looking at sort of you know dna activation or activation of inner memory because all of these quotes are coming from that time this wisdom as you say so when people read them it's triggering them into that own aspect within them would you agree with that yeah I and mean, i mean that's uh, the actual purpose of why i actually wrote the book in the first place and the books and why i did raise an eden you know it was like um, i create like this nice field with all these seeds in it that people could um, use to get to where they're going and stuff and now it's evolved you know it's got like really strong roots and these books that I've uh, done and, you know, my future work, that's like the, the foundation stone for the building that's going to be constructed, you know. And there's no stronger foundation stone, you know, than the wisdom and uh, the empowerment, that, uh, you know, and the concentrated um, energies of, you know, of these books that are just solely focused on empowering people, healing people's thinking and, you know, healing the world and the reality in which everybody, you know, lives and just making sure that, <clears throat> you know, they can use their, their two primal, um, you know, forces that everybody has, which is, you know, the creator in of itself is a master creator, you know, it creates and yeah. births life and, um, <clears throat> you know, 
and you know love is the secret to life so the two forces that people have are creation and the creational ability you know that can be you know there's no limit on it really because you know the whole is contained within every single part and that's what a hologram is it contains the information of the whole within every single part so it's like everybody's in the ocean but you know drop within the ocean but they also contain the ocean within each little drop of themselves as well you know because you've got access to everything you know and in stillness in meditation which i do every day and every single hour as well i do it you know, so that channel is always open and I never, you know, drift too far from my higher self, you know, and the true me and stuff, mm -hmm. which is like an exercise everybody should be doing really, you know, you know, there's not a human being on earth that, um, you know, shouldn't be doing meditation because it's a needed thing, you know, on this lower, denser, you know, vibrational level yeah. in this dimension, you know, to be able to <clears throat> align with your higher self, you know, the true you from which you gain all your energy and your source, you know, and just, um, you know, keep pure and keep strong and certain in yourself, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, oh, I totally agree. It's so interesting. There's so many parallels between you and I. Um, I agree with everything you're saying. And even though you use different words and you present your um, inner inspiration in a different way, it's kind of the same thing. And I do see such a parallel. And as we've said, we both connected uh, with one another when I first got online you'd only been online I think a couple of years and we've spoken on and off um, and done things simultaneously we've kind of released our first book around the same time within a few months of one another and also did you know that um, we have pretty much the same um, amount of subscribers on YouTube as well <laughs> I was I was looking at your YouTube t channel today and I thought you've got the same number of subscribers as me that's that's another sort of parallel between us it's it's um, it's amazing, really, how it all works out, isn't it? Yeah, I, I did actually notice every single thing you mentioned, you know, and more as well, because I also uh, noticed that you was actually on your your 444th video yeah. uh, right now. <laughs> so, you know, 444 DOD in numerology, you know, that's my number. I've been creating 444 spirals all over the place for years, you know. Wow. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it was just funny to me that, you know, what that tells me is, means you are in the exact right place at the right time doing the right thing. Yes, you know what I, mean? I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. And, uh, you know, I see your inspiration. It kind of reminds me of... Um, in a way, a poet, you know, in, in days of, of old, before the Internet, the poet would have had like the the um, the book and the pencil with them or whatever, or they would have rushed back home to write the, the inspiration that's coming through and the words coming through or, the, or a playwright. But now it's like the quotes that go on on the videos and, and we're using the cyber world and the Internet. And with me, it's coming in. Um, on, on a different sort of platform and a different presentation coming in as channeling. But it is the same thing. It is that same place. Um, what I like to do is um, do a bit of bibliomancy right now. So I've got your book right in front of me and I've no idea okay. which, which quote I'm going to pick. So I'm Brilliant. going to just go through it and then, and then for you to talk about the one that comes out. So this is really, the bibliomancy here is for... Um, you and I and our connection and this um, conversation we're having, but for everyone who's listening, this is for them. So I have stopped at the creator assumes all forms. All forms are manifestations of the one. Although the ego itself is a manifestation of the human mind created as a reflex to the environment. So can you talk about that? <clears throat> yeah, it's basically um, about the 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 mind. Yeah, it goes into you know the one, the creator, who's the one. You know, obviously spawns all life. Like every single being and every single object and every single reality in existence is like um, <clears throat> it's split off from the initial one. And the uh, the thing that allows the creator to you know assume all different forms all at the same time, you know, is the fact that. Uh, a magnetic field splits off the energy. That's why there's two forces. The electrical form gives birth to all dimension, 
and, you know, form, you know, that's what electricity does. It allows the projection to, you know, it allows presence and for things to, you know, move forward. Whereas the magnetic field, you know, it, it basically creates a veil between all the omnipresent worlds and realities and dimensions and also all the objects within, you know, a creation. You know, so like, for example, like me and you, like we're separate beings on this level and um, like all the people out there are separate from us. And all of the objects, you know, around us, like the trees and, you know, the birds and animals and, you know, everything else, they're separate as well. But only on this level, you know, because at the highest level, if there was no magnetic field, you know, we'd all be just uh, one unit of energy. Because, you know, at the highest level, there is only one being here. There's only one unit of energy. It's, um, you know, we are the imagination of ourselves, basically. Yeah. And when it comes to, you know, the projections of self and stuff in the world... It's just um, <clears throat> basically the, um, you know, how you project yourself in the world and the ego, you know, a lot of people, the ego, it's not, it's not like an enemy or something, you know, like don't be a tyrant with your own mind, basically, is one of the lessons. And just basically the ego is a part of you and it's, you know, the unconscious part. But it's also the ego is what, you know, humans really are all about because we could not exist as a separate entity, you know, from our source and from the creator, you know, without um, a little bit of ego there because the ego, you know, um, you know, that allows us to wake up in the morning and yeah. to, you know, to go out and to do stuff. And it needs to be looked after. There needs to be a balance you know, between your higher self and your human self and all levels, you know, you've got to go from the reality where you are, not from where you want to be, if you know what I mean, you know, to, in order to be constructive about everything, yeah. you know, so the ego, instead of trying to destroy the ego or, you know, or, you know, be a tyrant with it and, you know, treat it badly, you know, just, you know, I've always found it more useful to, you know, be kind to yourself, basically, and be kind to your ego and, you know, and then, and then it actually becomes more conscious because, you know, just see the ego as like a separate entity, I suppose, but also see it as a part of you. So, you know, just treat it nice, uh, you know, give it respect and comfort. And eventually, even the ego part of yourself will become, um, you know, enlightened as well. And then you will be truly unified, you know, when you become fearless. Yeah. yeah, well, that is a fantastic explanation of that quote. Integration uh, rather than transcendence is what the nine would say. So I'm in complete agreement. But you explain that so well. And it's amazing that you've created this fractal. You talk about the fractality of the universe, but you've created this fractal within your own creativity because, you know, you've just sort of shown me how if I do bibliomancy on your book and pick a quote, you can then explain everything about that quote. So if you wanted to, you could actually see your creativity and everything you're doing as infinite it's like you you don't have enough <laughs> years in the physical life to be able to deliver the amount of information that you could because each quote potentially could create a new video a new series of videos a new book just from one quote i could just pick any quote and say to you make another video from this, make a series of videos from this, make a book from this, and you could, so you're opening up and up and up, and I guess that's what the book is going to do for anyone who reads the book. I could do that myself. I could look at your book, do bibliomancy, pick something, look at the quote and think, right, let me speak to the nine about this quote. What are the nine saying to me? Let them bring through their information, and then I do a transmission based on that. So that. Your work is a perfect example of the fractality of creativity. W would you say you resonate with that? Yeah, and that's actually one of the reasons why I actually put it into this form, you know, in the first place. You know, I made it as simple as possible, you know, in a refined state. And, uh, you know, and I just basically placed it in there so people can just, um, you know, go into the quote. And that's why I says, you know, basically just take a quote a day or something because, you know, because of the potential and the energy that's imbued into each quote, it's like an onion, like many, many layers of uh, information just encoding it, you know, encoded in just one quote alone. So it's like, um, you know, that's one of the biggest things, really. People need to expand their capacity, you know, for truth every single day because, you know, 
you uh, you're only as as conscious as you you know allow yourself to be you know it's like that guy said you know probably like a decade ago now but he says you know if you have a golf you know a golf ball size consciousness you'll have a golf ball size awareness so basically yeah. you know if you can expand that consciousness you gain more awareness you know as you go and awareness never shrinks back to its original dimension once it's been opened anyway yeah <laughs> so so one of the um, you know foundation stones for anyone's spirituality as well should be to um, cultivate and expand the capacity you know for truth every single day you yeah know? Oh, I totally, totally agree. So one of the subjects that you go into quite deeply on your YouTube channel, and it's also touched upon in several of the quotes in book one, as I said, I don't have book two, I only have book one here, is the Illuminati, the Illuminati agenda, the, the story of what they are or who they are. Um, and I myself, with my communications with the nine, also have been brought to um, learning about that side of life and presenting the information as it is so crucial and so very important. And especially now, I don't know if you would agree with me that, you know, that part of our um, information is really sort of coming to the fore right now. It's a real crux of what we're learning about because, um, you know, we really are at this intense sort of crossroads right now. Um, so, A, would you agree with that? And, and B, um, what would you say, given what you're picking up, the quotes that are coming through, the work that you've done for your channel, what would you say is happening now specific to where we're going on a third dimensional level and i'm talking here about um you know the state of the world in a sort of um war battle kind of energy a lot of people are talking about i've had people writing to me are we going into world war three and i think looking at the um you know this sort of linear presentation of life this false narrative i guess it looks like we are I personally um, have my own feelings on this, and I'm speaking to ni the nine about this, but what would you say, given your research, would you agree that that part of our information is crucial right now? Um, and would you say that, you know, what would you say around World War Three and battle and what's going on in the world? You know, do you have information that you can share? Well, there's, you know, there's many forces within the world, you know, and there's there's forces in the world from, you know, obviously from beyond the world, you know, I, you know, I and some other people call it, you know, the greater darkness that's within the world. So not only do people have to deal with, you know, the evil inside themselves and stuff and the ego and stuff and, you know, unifying themselves and really basically create a, a powerful focal point to concentrate all of their energy so they can become powerful, you know, and power, you know, a lot of people uh, get it mixed up because, you know, when you mention power, because we've seen so many abuses of power within the world, they see power as a, as a bad thing or something, but you need power to be do, you know, you need power to do anything, you know, power is not a, a bad thing and power is a very good thing, you know, and, um, you know, you can use it for good, you know, but only if you have uh, a restraint that's been cultivated, you know, by your own inner uh, truth, you know, because, you know, power, if, you, if there's no love with power, basically it becomes destructive. And um, it's like people themselves, like on a, on a micro level, you know, compared to the macro world or whatever, you know, if, uh, if there's no self-love, then people will become self-destructive and have self-destructive tendencies. That's why they, they harm themselves and they harm those around them. You know, they don't mean to do it. It's just that they need to really take more time out themselves to love themselves more, basically, because it's the self-love, um, you know, the lack of self-love that makes them self-destructive. So on a wider scale, you can also say for the human race that, you know, a lack of love on a wider scale will also lead to the same results. You know, you know, there's two kind of forces within the world. There's, you know, negative and positive as well, you know, in this reality in which we inhabit and stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, the, the positive, um, you know, vibrations, they're creative in their nature, you know. They expand and they create and they birth life and, you know, they, you know, they give presence. Whereas the destructive forces, uh, you know, the negative ones, they're the ones who, um, you know, take life and destroy life, 
you know, and, you know, although chaos must be, you know, to give birth to dancing stars, you know, that's the saying, you know, from a long time ago, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, these people have created a whole culture in our world based on uh, chaos and based on death, basically, you know, they live within a culture of death, whereas if you're creative and, you know, you have a lot of love for yourself, people around you and, you know, in the world in which you live, and, you know, generally all life, you know, if you can embrace, you know, all life with your circle of love, then that means that you're part of the, the culture of life, you know, and, um, you know, the culture of life is what you want to be part of. So, you know, there's, there's a definite large, you know, polarization that I see within the world at the moment that's happening, whereas, you know, it's like, it's almost as if, like, the human race is, like, splitting into two groups, if you notice, like, mm -hmm. one is, um, you know, very warlike and destructive and chaotic, whereas the, um, you know, the other people are really getting unified and they're really becoming uh, powerful. They're really, they're having to sharpen up and focus, you know, down to a point, basically, in of themselves in this world that, you know, that's going on at the moment. And, you know, the best thing to do really is just, you know, don't engage with the chaotic or destructive energies as much as possible. You know, you know, stay away. You know, stay clear of them as much as possible, and lessen your, you know, lessen your engagements, and focus really on what you're doing every day. You know, moment to moment. You know, because the more chaos and the more destructive it is in the world, the more it calls for your, you know, peace and truth to be, you know, shown out, you know, to everybody and create stability. You know, and that's the biggest thing, really. That's why, you know, a lot of people. They, you know, they go into stillness and they meditate because it really does have a measurable effect upon the whole scale of things. Now, if you get like um, a really spiritually integral, you know, being, just one being in of itself, that can bring a lot of total, um, you know, peace and calm, you know, to the invite, you know, to the entire spectrum of that area, you know. So it not only, you know, depends upon how many people are actually doing, you know, meditation stillness, but it also depends upon the, you know, the focus and the concentration of the actual beings who are doing it as well, you know. And like I said, it's basically just focus on what you're doing and surround yourself with people as strong as you are, if not stronger. And, you know, I always say, you know, when those who love peace can organise as good as or better than those who love war, then there shall be peace you know yeah so it's down to you really that always always was and always will be that's that's absolutely lovely and that is that is really such good advice such aligned advice so really i guess would you say what you're saying here is when someone asks the question are we going into world war three that's not necessarily the question that is um a good question for them to ask really the question that they need to ask themselves is what do i want to create for myself in my um personal life and in my global life so i'm going to focus on what i want to create and feel those emotions that are in alignment with what i want to create rather than asking questions like are we going into world war three is that what you are saying turn inward um, rather than into a state of chaos yourself, because if you're in a state of chaos yourself and panic and worry, then you're feeding that chaotic, destructive, uh, negative energy. Yeah, basically, you know, people complicate things. And if something's like very, very uh, destructive or chaotic or if there's something that you don't understand, you know, take a step back, slow down, you know, go inside, you know, go in yourself and just observe because, you know, then you can just observe the world that's, you know, in motion because, you know, we, we live within an ocean of motion. That's what this universe is. Everything mm -hmm. is, in, you know, is within movement, you know, spiraling back, you know, to the source of, you know, from where it came. And um, basically just, you know, don't get caught up in other people's uh, struggles. You know, don't, don't get caught up in other people's chaos, you know, because you can take a higher, you know, ground in yourself, you know, that's what um, people who are aligned with the higher self do. You know, they're taking up higher ground in themselves first before they even attempt to create, you know, the stability on the outside and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's basically what they need to do, you know. Just don't engage with the chaos because, you know, it's your choice as a creator what you want to create. And uh, also, if you're not creating, somebody else is doing it for you, you know, and that's one of the reasons, you know, just like I've put in, um, you know, all these seeds of wisdom in this book, in media, 
and in um, you know in um, you know film and movies and um, you know all the other social you know platforms you know if you notice the elite have always they're always telling you what they're going to do beforehand mm -hmm. and they're always planting seeded ideas into you know the culture and into society and stuff ahead of time because they know that everybody's creators so they're trying to hijack the creation for them you know so they're so instead of being conscious creators you know they're actually you know trying to make everybody unconscious so they themselves can steer everybody towards you know where they want with their own agenda you know what i mean uh, so. absolutely i completely agree yeah that's that's exactly what is happening so they are rather than um hijacking uh, our reality they are leading us into a situation where we make ourselves vulnerable to hijacking our own reality we're actually doing it ourselves it's not as if someone else is doing it to us they're creating an environment where they control us uh, because we're actually doing this to ourselves um, also I would say is that the same thing would you say um, through the work that you've done the research you've done the quotes that you've brought out would you say that there are different timelines here and so your own way of thinking and your own emotional um, makeup would actually create a different timeline for you so the individuals that do move into um, a chaotic energy where they are worrying about what's going to happen where where they're allowing their their creative ability to be hijacked um, are they going to experience um, a more destructive timeline as a match to that and those individuals that are in a state of peace in a state of love who are becoming sovereign and powerful and who are not put in, putting themselves into situations where their creativity can be hijacked. Um, are they going to create a timeline for themselves where things are more peaceful and they avoid that destructive timeline? Well, like, um, you know, all time is, you know, simultaneous. It's all, you know, it's all occurring at the same time, you know, even before God the creator created, you know, all universes, you know, in the multiverse and, you know, all dimensions. There was, um, you know, it would all, it was already, you know, finished onto itself. You know, time itself is, um, you know, is a series of pictures basically that's slowed down by the magnetic field, you know, like glue. You know, the magnetic field slows down the manifestations and the projections of the energy, you know, and, um, you know, creates time, you know, and births us into time, you know, as a being. Because, you know, while we're within form, you know, in beingness, you know, as a separate entity, you know, as a perceived separation from the creator, we can only exist in time, in a certain place, at a certain time, in form. You know, if we're not in form, we don't have to obviously exist in time anymore. But while we're in form, you know, that's what we are, you know. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> the timeline thing is funny because I always, you know, say that, you know, in order for something to exist, something has to be open to the possibility of its own existence, yeah. you know. So one of the reasons why everybody is here today is because they dreamt themselves into being. Yeah. You know, it's the same with this world as well. So, you know, there's no limit on what a person can dream or bring into creation because everybody themselves is, you know, a dreamer and the entire reality is built from consciousness. You know, all of this is just a thought, you know, in the mind of, you know, the creator, basically. So, you know, any timeline can exist. But moment to moment, if people want to be more positive, you know, I mean, that's their choice, isn't it? You know, they can be as positive as they want, you know, from moment to moment and stuff, or they can be as negative as they want. But yeah. um, it's like an individual um, choice, you know, rather than a collective thing at the moment, because, you know, because obviously the world is, you know, is controlled by, you know, money at the moment, which is printed out of thin air by a group of people you know, who we don't even know who they are. And, you know, the only the only thing that's holding the world together at this point really is belief, you know, mm -hmm. the belief that that, pa that the, uh, the money actually has um, some, you know, value, you know. You know, when it doesn't, it's printed out of thin air, you know. So, um, you know, people really, like I said, it just comes back to the, the, that same thing again, just, you know, focus in on themselves and, um, you know, be strong in of themselves and just take time out for themselves every day and it doesn't matter you know what timeline you're on you know we are all in this timeline together 
and you know there's no escaping you know where we are at the moment so we might as well just become as powerful and strong as possible in ourselves on all levels and then just um, you know learn to say no as well you know if there's anybody trying to you know uh, corrupt you or you know or take you off the path from which you're on you know then just learn to say no put your foot down straight away don't even allow a space for any um, distortion or you know anything to exist like that you know because it's the space that uh, people try to create in beings and stuff that allows an attachment onto that being that binds to them you know that's why it's called an attachment or bind because it actually does bind onto that person on a certain level you know so people just need to be able to you know take more time to focus on themselves and strengthen themselves you know and uh, just basically methodically like you could just make a list and go through different parts like uh, you, you know your emotions and uh, you know your thoughts you know have they been positive that day have you been in control of your emotions you know and, and make sure that you know instead of your emotions and your thoughts directing you you know you're directing your thoughts and your emotion you know yeah wow that's fantastic that's such good advice um could you talk a bit about book two i know you've mentioned it and you're saying it's um not really come from the youtube work that you've done but this is more um organic and uh in what way does it differ to book two book one or is it is it a sort of a a carry on from book one does it have um you know is there something different about it is there a different sort of energy with book two can you talk about book two Yeah, there's, um, well, book one, like I said, was a compressed uh, book of the last 10 years. It's like a decade of work compressed into one book. And obviously, I had to set a larger context in book one. So, you know, that's why I covered everything. And I, I made sure that I covered all of the important things, you know, uh, like Atlantis and ancient history. And, you know, I delved into them loads and, you know, UFOs and, you know, creation and love and infinity and, you know, fractal infinity and stuff. But in this one, it's more of actual powerful, practical quotes of, you know, wisdom that people can use every day to empower themselves, you know, on a day to day basis and hour to hour and stuff. And it's got a lot of uh, spiritual foundational pillars in there that a lot of them as well aren't widely used yet within, you know, spirituality. You know, like there's bits and bobs everywhere, but I wanted to create it all in one place for people. So, you know, like one of the first you know the first page in book two which is you know raise need and volume two wisdom of the singular truth you know that's the second book um you know the first quote which i wanted people to become you know i put the most important things at the start of the book like i did with book one i made sure that you know be love you know that famous quote that everybody's using now <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, that, that was at the start you know but that was my little um you know seed for the human race a long time ago you know and uh, like book two starts off with, you know, one of the ultimate questions, you know, one can ask is how present are you to your own life? You know, how present are you to yourself? You know, for everything comes down to this. And this is ultimately what separates all of humanity. <clears throat> so basically, you know, presence, everything is about presence. You know, how present are you to, you know, this moment even, you know, how present are you to yourself? Because, um, you know, if you're not present to yourself, how are you going to be able to give any presence to anybody else around you or life or the environment or the place in which you are or whatever? You know, so, you know, concentration is power within a being. So, you know, basically just be as present to yourself as you can, you know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, will there be a book three? Well, I actually don't know because, you know, I never I never plan ahead or know yeah. what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, all these like, um, you know, wisdom quotes, you know, they spawn spontaneously, you know, throughout the day and night over the many weeks and months and stuff. But I did say to some friends that there probably would be a book three in a few years or something, you know, because that's how long it takes to, you know, accumulate all of this wisdom, you know, at specific times and stuff. But, you know, the quotes, they, they, they still are spawning, yeah. But I don't know how long it's going to be. It's like not even I know, you know, how, you know, how long it's going to take to write another one or even if there will be another one. But at this point, I think I actually have got about 200 new quotes, you know, to stick into, you know, book three, yeah. maybe. So I, it might actually look like it could be a trilogy, yeah. you know, this. 
I see that. I do see a book three, I have to say. I'd just like to say to everyone listening that, you know, in my opinion, we have talked about what the book is and how you can use it for bibliomancy and how you can use it for your own fractality of creation, the keys, the codes, the triggers. But it, it kind of takes you on a journey if you want to read it in a linear sense. You know, if you read it page by page rather than dipping in, it takes you on a journey as you go through. And by the time you sort of get into the first sort of 10, 20 pages, you kind of go into another zone. And that's when that will start to trigger your own um, awareness, uh, your own um, sort of alignment as to whether do you resonate with these quotes. And, and if you do resonate, where do you resonate? It sort of opens you up. It's um, a really beautiful book, and I'm really pleased that I bought it, and I look forward to reading book two and eventually book three. So, Daniel, thank you so much for letting me speak to you today. Can you tell everyone where they can reach you? Um, can you give us your you know, YouTube um, channel, and uh, can you let people know how they can purchase your book if they want to? Yeah, well, actually, uh, I sent you an email with all the details on it, so you can, you know, you can stick this, you know, below the video and stuff. But I will. You know, if, pe if people want to, um, you know, buy the book, they can buy it, you know, um, you know, volume one and volume two. You know, they're both on Amazon in uh, paperback at the moment because, um, you know, my work was – I've got the most suppressed channel on YouTube, basically, with, you know, thousands of videos gone over the years, multiple channels. You know, the war has just been so epic on YouTube for me – that's also one of the reasons why I've acquired all this wisdom through the struggle of it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's been it's been a roller coaster ride, but you know that's what life is. So I make the most of it. But um, yeah, th there is um, you know the two books are available on Amazon, and also my YouTube channel is um, Daniel of Doria. You know, just Daniel of Doria, all one word, and you know two A's on the end of Doria. You know, because my original channel was deleted. You know, so I had to come back again in 2010. <laughs> yes, I do remember that. I do remember. What, talk, talk to me about that. Why was the, your original channel deleted in the first place? Well, basically, um, you know, YouTube was a new thing to everybody within the world. And, you know, uh, a few years ago, you know, YouTube was bought out by, you know, Verizon. And, you know, and they started, instead of becoming YouTube, it became their tube. So then it yeah. was introduced with um, a different corporation that bought YouTube out. And then, obviously, you know, on YouTube back in the day, you know, uh, you could share videos really, really fast. You could, you know, it was in an early stage of its life, so it's a lot more easy to share everything and information. But now, as the years have gone by, it's been getting harder and harder for everyone to basically share their creativity because that's what culture and society does in the world today. It tries to destroy your creativity so you can't share it enough, you know, because, you know, they don't want people empowered, you know. Sadly, you know, there's, there's a group of people in the world who don't want to see people, you know, um, shine in the brightest they can or anything, you know. Yeah, so. absolutely. I, I absolutely agree. The <laughs> nine say there'll always be a back door. There will always be a way to present creativity. And no sooner do they try to clamp down on one area and control one area, than a new area will spring forth of light that we can then present our creativity through so yeah because i was going to say as well you know we're within an ocean so you know they you know they may be able to slow down the flow of information but they can never stop the flow of information you know yeah, and absolutely. that's that's the great thing you know because that means that it doesn't matter what they do or what control mechanisms they place you know put in place or whatever you know like all these youtube nazis coming in you know nazifying youtube <laughs> yeah it means it means that you know, people would just go elsewhere or do something else or, you know, they've got creative imagination and that spark is still alive within, you know, the person. And, you know, as long as the spark of love is within the hearts of at least one person, then there's always going to be a world and a reality, you know. Yeah. There's always hope. The, t the team of light is so big now, and I think no matter what they they do, it seems to be backfiring on them. Um, it, it, it looks like it's working on the surface, but when you really sort of look deeply, you see that it isn't working. What they're doing is, you know, I, I would say they've they've had their day, really, and they're just sort of hanging on to those last threads of what they once had. Um, you know the the nine call this the last stand they're creating that last stand like like one does in battle where they um, do everything they can to sort of um, 
fight for that uh, last moment so that they don't sort of lose. And that's the energy that they seem to be projecting right now. And it's um, the more that people look at that in the way that you've been talking about in this in this uh, discussion today, the more that people go within and they don't concentrate on that chaos and they are focused on their own empowerment and their own creativity, the more they create that energy in this world, the more reality responds to that. And there isn't a place for that negative control structure anymore. It's just not sustaining anymore. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. You know, that's, um, you know, there's a few different quotes in uh, book two about this as well, about, you know, whichever energy you're focusing, you know, because every person contains, you know, all the energies within themselves, within their, you know, fractal, because they're a drop within the ocean, an ocean within a drop, you know, so it's like, <clears throat> whatever energy you focus in on, be it love or compassion, you know, or, you know, giving, you know, it's bringing more of them energies within to the world, you know, into this space, into the sphere, you know, which means that <clears throat> just see it like, uh, you, you know, like a tap, like a stargate, you know, like a person is the X point between all omnipresent worlds and realities. And what that means is just see yourself as a tap and then you can turn the tap on. And, you know, <clears throat> however you are, you can, you know, give compassion into the world or, you know, whichever way the water's flowing through you, you know, be it the energies, you know, you can bring more love into the world or you can bring anything you want into the world. You know, it's always, always down to you, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Just one more question before we um, end our discussion today. And this is kind of like. Uh, personal for me but I'm sure it's related to anyone listening as well in yep. in my next book that I'm channeling at the moment from the nine which I'm sort of about <clears> three <throat> quarters of the way through uh, so <clears throat> I have no idea when it will be ready but for the first time the nine have started to speak to me about Atlantis uh, it's not really a subject I've particularly looked into before they haven't really spoken about it too much I, they've spoken about the crystal technology and the atlantean priests and um i know that it's a civilization that existed so they, they've mentioned it a little bit but they're going into a lot more information now in this book that i'm writing than they've ever given me before so i know it's a massive massive subject but you've got lots of information can you sort of condense that somewhat and tell me as a complete novice in this subject really what's the story with atlantis and how is it related to now because this is what the nine are saying it's so important to kind of remember if you like um because it's related to now does that make sense to you yeah yeah it's uh, well basically you know only take from the past what doesn't burden you in the present you know and only take from the past that which you can use in the present as well you know so <clears throat> it's like um you know you know if you don't learn from something in the past obviously you're just going to keep uh, repeating the same cycle again and again and again but it, it's also um in a sense what happened to atlantis was um they were unified in themselves up to a certain point but then you know the ego started you know people started basically what ego means is um you know it basically takes over the person's actions you know, whereas everybody, you know, if you're in the heart, in higher ground in yourself, you know, uh, coming from the point of the singular truth inside yourself and your soul, you know, you um, <clears throat> basically, you, um, you know, everything's truthful and pure and honest and, uh, you know, it's not corrupted in the slightest and it never would be. But the people in, in Atlantis, they, you know, they started becoming corrupted and out of relationship with the higher self. And they started thinking from the lower parts of themselves instead of the higher ones, you know. So they started thinking uh, from the human mind, you know, uh, as opposed to, um, you know, the heart. And sadly, you know, they just we're finding more and more ways to be able to, um, you know, tap into the power because Atlantis was searching. They were searching for the sound of unity, you know, that binded all things and they kept delving into it. And they were like, they were doing all kinds of high tech experiments, like merging energy fields into one another. That is to be able to have technology that 
mergers like say my laptop with a TV and make it into one being or something yeah. and that's where all the Archon beings come from because an Archon you know is a being whereas uh, two beings have come together into one body if you know what I mean so basically they were uh, messing around with creation but not doing it from a place of love and um, you know and you know a higher self but doing it from a place of ego and wanting to weaponize it and stuff just like today and basically that's one of the reasons why they um, destroyed themselves that's one of the reasons why the deserts in Egypt instead of being tropical uh, like they used to be when the pyramids were built you know like 12,000 years ago they um, you know they become desert you know because all of that evil kind of turned the environment in on itself so all of the water um, you know there's loads of water below the deserts but it's not on the surface anymore you know all the deserts in the world there's there's loads of water you know below the surfaces because in a desert you know you seem like there's no water but the truth is the water is under the ground it's just dropped down you know there's nothing on the surface you know and it's the same with Antarctica as well at the moment and that's why there's a lot of activity with all the governments around the world going to Antarctica and stuff it's because in the past you know it was a beautiful uh, inhabited tropical place uh, it was a beautiful tropical chain of islands actually you know um, and there was an ancient map that actually described it as well that's even more accurate and it was made thousands of years ago than the maps are today in fact I actually think they use that map today but it shows Antarctica as it was and it was like a beautiful chain of islands without no ice seal or anything and recently it's just started to like melt and stuff so there's been all kinds of things that have been found there like pyramids and you know castles and stuff even and uh, you know I mean the entire globe is just full of cavern systems anyway that the ancients built but all the governments of the world have been adding to it over the years and stuff but <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a bit sad to me though because you know there's a lot of occultists within the world that you know they know uh, what happened to Atlantis but they're trying to rebuild Atlantis but the problem is they're building something from a bad seed so you know if they tried to recreate Atlantis Atlantis failed so it wasn't a good seed so why would you take something out of the same box if you know what I mean and try to plant it again you know mm. it's just going to destroy itself again but you know <clears throat> I mean the only thing we can do basically is you know focus you know on ourselves you know surround ourselves with people as strong or stronger than we are and just learn and just organize you know and just uh, you know basically just be love you know that's the answer to everything you know love conquers all yeah so. that's fantastic can you recommend um to people who want to sort of go out there and um learn about all these things all these different subjects that you have on your youtube channel and that your quotes relate to in your books do you have any specific um individuals that you can recommend that you would say are uh, really good quality um truthful research uh, any any uh for example let's say someone like graham C hancock who does a lot who's written um you know a lot of uh material relating to you know ancient technologies and ancient civilizations who are your favorites that you would recommend well my uh, my favorites one of them that's you so oh, uh, bless you, know, you. That's okay. aren't you lovely <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like you says, um, you know, and pointed out earlier, there's a lot of strands of our energies that are actually the same anyway for some reason. It's yeah. like strands that stretch, you know, through years and years and, you know, of time. And it's amazing that that's why we're like linked through time and space for some reason and we keep doing the same things at the same, you know, anchor points in space time. Absolutely. You know, no points. Yeah. Where are you in the UK? Uh, well, I mean, I've lived all over the place. I lived in the east and the north and the south and the west. And I'm in the east again at the moment in oh. Uh, Lincolnshire. Oh, right, you know, yeah. In the countryside. So all this, uh, all these books are being spawned in the English countryside. You know, in a nice cottage it surrounded by nature. Lovely. And <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, I was going to say as well. My favourite people, apart from you, obviously, is um, uh, Santos Bernacki because uh, you know he does the law stuff he goes into the law and the history of you know the Vatican and the Jesuits and he's got some good stuff on that you know yeah. but, you know as with anybody don't take everything they've got just take what's useful you know because ultimately you know nobody has all of the pieces you know everybody's a guide exactly. so you know in, in mm. some things you've got to give them the rein to you know do any ideas they want you know but definitely on the law stuff and uh, the history of the Vatican and you know Santos Bernacchi is one of the best you know pr 
you know, best people there, really. And then there's, um, you know, Michael Tsarian as well. You know, I like Michael Tsarian because he goes into all the ancient history stuff as well and Atlantis, but he also covers all of the psychological stuff and all the psychological aspects and, you know, the ego and the shadow self and the mind. And he also covers a lot of the, the droidic ancient history, which is very important because, you know, <clears throat> everybody sees themselves as British and, um, you know, and the English and that the, uh, you know, and that these people were wiping out and genociding people, you know, all over the world and uh, genociding all the aboriginals, native tribes. But the first genocides didn't actually occur in America. It actually occurred within Europe, you know, and there was massive um, genocide of the Druids, you know, as all these, um, you know, evil people coming from Phoenicia. And then they set up, um, you know, Venice, you know, Venetian. They became Venetian. And then they set up, um, you know, camps like they set up Rome and Paris and London and Scotland. And then they went from there. You know, they were establishing themselves more and more into the territory, you know. And we basically, you know, everybody within uh, England and Britain, you know, they've had their identity stolen. Everybody in Europe has had their identity stolen and the tribes for which they're actually a part of. You know, so that happened first. And then there was the Dark Ages in which all of the history was stolen and the identity, you know, that's when it happened. They say that the Dark Ages, you know, nobody knows what happened. But what happened was these forces came in and they stole all of the history and, they, and were wiping out their identities and stuff. And then there was the, the witch hunts that the Vatican did with all of the, you know, the Inquisition of all of the free-thinking women that they hunted down just because they were free-thinking, basically. And um, basically, it just went from there. They went into Australia and killed 80% of the Aboriginals. They went into America and doing the same there. And it, it's a non-stop progression, you know, an intrusion, you know, on all levels, you know, in the most intimate and personal ways as well. And, um, you know, it's just crazy. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. You are an absolute gold mine of information. You really are. I would agree with you about Santos Bonacci uh, or Bonacci. I only um, discovered him quite recently, uh, and I was very um, interested in the sort of um, the geometry and also the, um, the way that he, he talks about um, the metaphors um, and, and then he puts them into a mathematical uh, sense. And I didn't really understand everything he was saying. But as I was listening to him, I could just see that he has this patterning within the mind that I recognize as, uh, you know, high level genius. That's how I would see him. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, Santos, you know, he reads a lot of books and, um, you know, he also, you know, creates a lot of music and stuff, you know, which he shares with everybody, which is really, really good, you know, and, um, <clears throat> you know, music, you know, everything is communication, you know, everything is, you know, symphony, you know, of the creator, you know, everything's in motion, you know, uh, in this universe and in flux, you know, it, you know, at different speeds and stuff. And um, I, I just think it's really important to, like, um, cultivate, you know, as Santos Bernacchi does, you know, in books and stuff, you know, by reading a lot of books, basically cultivate an environment of growth and learning within yourself, you know, like a positive, you know, learning. And then you'll find that wisdom spawns of itself because of that, because of the information, because, like, uh, it's like having, it's like creating a space inside yourself, which is like a field, and then it's like water in the field with, like, um, you know, the right waters and stuff, you know, and then it's bound to grow some plants in there, and it's the same with this. It's bound to grow some, you know, um, plants that are information, that are like wisdom, and, you know, other things, or ideas that you can use later on. You know, yeah. different kind of plants that some grow into trees, some grow into bushes or whatever, and a lot smaller, and some create whole new fields in of themselves. So, you know, it's important to do that. And <clears throat> I was going to say one more thing as well that um, there is one other guy who I hide it, you know, I, you know, I put in really high esteem, and that is uh, Daniel Winter, you know, Dan Winter, because he talks a lot about DNA and the importance of uh, bliss and the importance of presence. And uh, he goes into the whole galactic history, and he actually goes into the, the fractals of uh, galactic history, and, you know, a lot of the uh, the wars and stuff that occurred and things. And, um, you know, he talks about DNA and how important it is to be living within a culture of life as well. And, you know, like I explained earlier, and not be part of the culture of death, which is, uh, you know, within this world at the moment. 
So, yeah, yeah. That, that's the other guy that I really, you know, do love as well. <laughs> I, I would agree. I've watched some Daniel Winter, and I, I don't understand a lot of what he says either. But when I look at him, the nine said to me that they'd been speaking to me about the new physicists and um, that these new physicists would uh, together, a team of new physicists across this planet, together they would discover the truth of our entire reality right through the dimensions and that they would be able to explain this to us. And when I first discovered Daniel Winter, um, I was just um, so interested by a lot of the terminology and the words he was using were so similar to the things the nine were teaching me. And they said... He is one of the new physicists and right at the top, they said. Yeah, yeah, he definitely is. You know, he's, he's the best of the best, you know, is all I can say with uh, what he's got, you know, because obviously it matches all of the stuff that I've got as well and uh, many of the other people out there as well, I'm sure, you know, it matches a lot of the stuff they've got as well. But like I said, you know, I've always supported all of the people, if you notice, on my channel, all of the people who are basically geniuses who are ahead of the time, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, I supported their work and tried to really, you know, water the plants in their field, if you know what I mean, as well a little bit, as well as do my own stuff. You know, that's why that, that's one of the reasons why I've um, it took me so long to write the books as well is because I was in the background helping so many other people, you know, water their work as well. You know, and in, in a lot of cases, you know, they didn't even know, you know, but <clears throat> luckily, though, uh, you know, Brian Forster, he's actually got me. There's two channels he has on my on uh, on his channel that he's put in the window and one of them's my backup channel. Oh, so, uh, wow. That's excellent. Know, it, <laughs> he obviously appreciated what I did or whatever. But, yeah, I talk to Brian every few months. But uh, he's such a busy guy, though. He does tours all the time. And, you know, if anybody gets a chance, you know, I suggest they go on the tours because, you know, he goes all into the elongated uh, Peruvian schools and stuff and, you know, all the history of the world, you know, from all over the place. And it's just absolutely amazing, you know. I'm, I'm so happy that there's people like Brian and you and all of the others out there that are doing their, you know, their thing. Because, yeah. you know, every single person that, you know, is focused on this kind of stuff and bringing more of it into the world, you know, is waking everybody else up. And if you can create and bring uh, a lot of it into the world, you know, that it actually becomes an environment where you can establish a community or something, you know, yeah. people will see that as an example. And not only will they see it as an example, but that will be the reality for them as well. You know, and they will, you know, integrate into what you're doing as opposed to, you know, um, you know, being stuck in the system or whatever as well. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I totally agree. And there are more to come. And if, you know, with the books that you have written, um, if people don't know where to start in cultivating their own creativity, accessing their own wisdom and then presenting those teachings, then there are many, many ways to do that. And one of those ways is definitely your books so um please everyone check out daniel of doria's youtube channel and raising eden wisdom of the eternal book one and uh and what's the title of book two <clears throat> wisdom of the singular truth wisdom of the singular truth i love that so uh i have um a couple of um adverts for the book which i will edit in at the end or rather my my other daniel <laughs> he, oh, brilliant. He will edit in. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Brilliant. Thank Heard you. those in at the end of the interview. Thank you so much, Daniel. Honestly, as I said, you're a gold mine of information. You really are. I could talk to you all night. And it's been a long time. Uh, we've been talking about doing an interview for, I don't know, several years. <laughs> I, think, I think it's been about nine years, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, it's wonderful that it's, you know, come together today. So it's great to connect with you. Great to sort of share your story on both of our YouTube channels so you can say hello to all my subscribers that have never heard of you and i'm telling them to go check you out and i'm saying hello to all your subscribers that have never heard of me yep. hi <laughs> so, everybody yeah hi <laughs> so thank you so much daniel and i'm sure at some point we'll come together again and do another discussion update uh, on you know what's going on and uh, perhaps um, we'll both have more information out there more books more videos who knows <laughs> yeah, definitely, you know, and uh, this time, you know, make sure we don't leave it so long. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. All right, well, thank you very much, Daniel, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.